Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing as it helps out the channel and give this video a like if you do like it. So this is a review for A Horse Fly Fleas, released on the 13th of December 1947 with a blue ribbon reissue on the 7th of July 1956. It's the 510th in the series and it's directed by Bob McKimson. This one can be found on the Looney Tunes Platinum Collection Volume 2 Blu-ray set and I have a link below to that set because I can't show you the cartoon because of copyright reasons. And yeah, because I can't show you the cartoon, just a quick synopsis of what happens. So A. Flea, who's known here as Anthony Flea, encounters a horse fly and the two of them go exploring on a dog where they encounter the natives in a Wild West situation. Needless to say, that poor dog gets tormented quite a bit. So just a few bits of trivia before I get into my thoughts on this one. Now, this is the second of two Anthony Flea shorts, with the first one being An Itching Time by Bob Clampett. This time around, Mel Blanc voices the Flea, as opposed to Sarah Burner, who did so in the first short, aside from one yell that Mel Blanc did in that first short. Where's your horse? I used to live on a milk wagon horse. But they changed to autos and now I'm homeless. Well... Now, the horsefly scene in the beginning references the fact that after World War II, cars and trucks became cheaper, and as such, the old horse and car delivery systems that were mostly around uh, before World War II were slowly being phased out and becoming modernized. So, now onto my review of this one, and, and look... I definitely prefer An Itch in Time. I think it's more wilder, and I think it's just more, a lot more funnier. But this one definitely has its merits. It's just a different, I guess, flavor, if you will. And look, it is definitely a product of its time, and because around this time, there were plenty of Westerns depicting Native Americans as the, well, the villains, the bad guys, you know. So that, that of course, is unfortunate. But thankfully with this one, if you look past that, there is actually a lot to like. And the, the bits that uh, stand out to me the most is just how the dog is reacting to all of what's happening to him. So first up, you know, he's annoyed at what's going on. Then he's kind of intrigued and just puzzled at what's happening to him. And well, at the end, he just decides to accept the fact that, well, he's now got a circus <laughs> he can now enjoy. And look, speaking of the ending, I mean... I do have to say, uh, I get what they were trying to do here, but it wasn't exactly a strong ending to me. You know, it, was, it just felt like it just stopped. And that was that. There was like no real big punchline. But, you know, again, that's just a personal opinion. You may beg to differ, of course. And is this character any good? You know, with um, Anthony Flea, honestly... There's nothing wrong with him, but he's not really that appealing, and I can sort of see why this character didn't really take off. You know, maybe this was just an idea that uh, McKimson had, where he's like, "Okay, I'll team you with this uh, cute horse flea bug, well, horse fly rather," and they go off on adventures on dogs or something. But look, it's fine. So, what would I actually rate this one? Look, I'd probably be generous and give it a 7 because, and that's mainly because of this dog and just how it, how it was animated in this um, in, in this film. But again, this is not one I revisit too often, so I mean, it'd be either 6.5 or 7 out of uh, 10. But it's the last short of 1947, so expect a year in review video to come out not too long after this as we say hello to 1948 with some absolute classics. You know, some shorts actually are better than this one, I will have to admit. But, as always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care. Oh boy, I haven't seen a circus since I was a little pup. I'll get paid for it.